All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I really wanted to, in today's video, or at some point in the future, discuss this new fig variety that I'm growing because I think it has a lot of potential. I think it really checks all the boxes that I'm looking for. This is a very young tree of it here. This tree is only pushing about one foot. And you can see there's a fruit down there that's ripening. Um, you can see this fruit here will probably ripen relatively soon. It's a variety here. If you look at the pot, this is my makeshift tag until I actually give it a tag. It's called Salato. This is a local Italian variety that really is not well discussed or really well documented in you know, different Italian writings. Uh, they're pretty good at documenting and writing and talking about their particular varieties. Um, it's also not even really commercially available. Um, so, you know, this is really just the fig among Italian hobbyists. That's really the end of the day. Like at the end of the day, that's pretty much what it is. So this is like a fig that some hobbyists found. It's local. They thought it had some promise and they've been kind of spreading it around different communities of, of fig growers within Italy. And it's made its way into the United States. Um, and I, this is a young tree, as I showed you guys, but I have a much older tree that's uh, in now its second year from cutting. So it really looks about something like that. One of these guys over here that was in a five gallon size pot. And I recognize before it even ripened the fruits, by the way, I evaluated all these trees that I had in these five gallon size pots, the new varieties. We've been really trialing and experimenting with different varieties to see which ones could really make the cut here. And this was just one that really surprised me. Well, I wouldn't say it was a total surprise, but it certainly impressed me more than what I thought it was going to do. And uh, so I took it up out of one of these pots and actually planted it way over in the front of the house uh, in our hardiness experiment. So we're gonna find out at some point how hardy the tree is. But I do believe it probably has a chance to be relatively hardy. Um, so even before tasting the fruits, I was really impressed with this variety. And I figured now that I've been tasting the fruits and I've been, honestly guys, I've been eating a lot of them. Um, they're all extremely good. So not only does it perform well, it really checks a lot of the boxes I was looking for with a new variety, but it even tastes good. And so I'm gonna taste it for you guys today. Here's actually what it looks like. I'll show you guys this. I wish I could show you guys the tree, but I'm just not gonna do that. It's, there's nothing really to see, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, everyone wants to see the trees. I want to see the tree, see the tree, but there's not a whole lot to even really discuss about the tree itself other than you can see the shape of the fig here is pretty good. It's elongated. It doesn't have too much of a flat bottom to it or a fat bottom. The shape is good. The production's good. The rain resistance, the split resistance is good. It's been ripening in plenty of rain the last three weeks. Um, and this fig just seems to do really, really well here. It's well adapted to this particular climate. It also uh, does well in lower light conditions because it sets fruit relatively easily. Uh, even this young, you know, one gallon size tree that I had in a, in a pot set a bunch of fruit. So it has a longer stem, it has a more elongated shape. It sets well, it produces a lot of fruits, the tree is healthy. I would say the vigor is probably Actually, on the lower end, the branches don't produce very thick wood. So if anyone's really interested in this variety and maybe you get some cuttings from me, don't expect the cuttings to be very thick. It produces a bit thinner wood because the vigor is about, I would say, medium to low. It's not the lowest, but it's not about average in terms of medium. It's a little bit lower than average. Um, but it grows well. It grows well and it produces well. And, um, you know, as I said, I'm extremely happy with it. I think it's you know, a really great variety. And I wonder, because you have to wonder about a lot of the figs that come from Europe or a lot of the figs that come from other places, you have to wonder if it goes by a different name, you know, because not always are, you know, is the Italians communicating with the French growers or are the French growers communicating with the Spanish growers? And they have different names for basically the same fig. Um, so this one was, you know, said to be a local variety and it was named, um, you know, it was named because it was a local variety, but 
This one to me, if I had a guess and say it was maybe similar to something else, I would say it's probably similar to Noir de Boulogne, which is a really well-known French fig. So I would guess that this is similar, but I don't really know. And in fact, I'm not growing Boulogne. I wish I was. I've killed two of my trees, and I'm gonna try again to get it to acquire that variety. It's a very highly flavored fig. It's a commercial variety. It's got a great texture. It just has all the boxes checked. Kind of like this one. Uh, this one's very thick. It seems to dry well like Boulogne can. Um, it, it even looks similar in terms of the shape, but even the colors are a little off. But typically I've noticed on Boulogne is that on the outside they get these, these dots. And uh, you can maybe kind of make this out, these little dots here that show up on the skin, but it's still kind of, you know, hearsay. I'm not really saying it's Boulogne. I'm not saying it is Boulogne or I'm not saying it is, it's not Boulogne, you know? So I'm just pointing out that I'm gonna pay attention to that in the future. I'm gonna, you know, try to acquire Boulogne and figure out if they are indeed the same um, at some point because I have a hunch that they are. That's really all that is. So, but other than that, I can't think of anything. I've never tasted anything similar to this. I don't know of any other fig similar to this. Uh, so for all intensive purposes, it's probably just a very unique variety uh, by the name of Salato, a local Italian variety, and this is it. So let's try it. So it's got a pretty decent berry flavor, um, really high sugar content. It's got some figginess to it. It's kind of drying up here as the drier figs tend to get more figgy flavor. And the texture is very good. It's got some crunch to it um, and it's very thick, very thick and jammy. You can tell overall this is a very good quality fig, great eating experience. Um, and believe it or not, you know, like I said, it, it checks all the boxes so far. So I've been really impressed with it and more than just the flavor. Uh, and we're going to be talking about this fruit, I would imagine, for years to come. And hopefully, uh, you know, because I think this one's going to make the cut or at least, at the very least, be in a very high class of varieties that perform well um, here. So we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching this one. Uh, we'll catch you for the next one, all right? And here was uh, another shot. I'll zoom in. Here's another shot of the fruit. Very, very impressive. By the way, I don't have anything to sell from this thing. So if you're expecting cuttings or something like that, I wouldn't. I don't really have anything just yet. And it may take a few years to really be able to spread this around like I want to. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. Stay tuned. We'll catch you for the next one. Oh, and check out our blog, figboss.com. We've actually been writing a little bit about this fig over there on the blog before I even put out this video. So hopefully uh, you guys can check that out. Take care, everybody. We'll see you for the next one.